welcome back from the breakout. So I hope that you have enjoyed the, the experience of talking to your neighbor and that you are now feeling a little bit more connected to yourselves and also to this group. And um, so without further ado, I would now introduce, uh, the, I would uh, ask, have um, Ilka to show us a little bit on, of the outspace affordances that we are going to use for this event and afterwards. Ilka, is that okay for you to go on a, a quick? Well, Ilka is not back yet. He's not here. Uh, I was in a breakout with him and suddenly uh, <laughs> he disappeared. Okay. Then... A technical let's... problem. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So then let's, uh, I think we have fulfilled already the, the time frame for introductions and without uh, jeopardizing the session, maybe a uh, uh, bow. You can start, and uh, if whenever Ilka comes back, uh, we'll try to recover that before a Jane's session. Ilka could do a little bit on house space, and Jane could start the session. That would do that uh, work for you guys? Yes. Okay. So. so, without further ado, please take on the first part of this uh, session. Is now a workshop that will be led by Bo. It will take us on thirty minutes, and then we have the second workshop by Jane another 30 minutes and then uh, uh, group harvesting, you know, to get the conclusions. That's the plan for today's. Bo, all yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you all see my slides now? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so first of all, thank you for the invitation and, and I'm really eager to talk to you about the, this topic on how to create psychological safety in meetings because I think that's a, really a core thing that uh, uh, we should all uh, care about, especially how do we facilitate physical uh, psychological safety and how do we make it happen in uh, virtual online environments? And uh, I'm going to explore that a little bit with you. So I'm not going to talk for half an hour. I'm going to talk maybe 10 minutes and then uh, we will do some different activities. And I will see if I can take advantage of house space. I'm not that familiar with house space, uh, but I still think you can get an idea on how you can use it. Uh, but uh, first of all, where does uh, psychological safety, the concept, come from? Uh, I don't know if you heard about Google that some years ago did a big research. Uh, they, they wanted to find out what were the best performing teams within Google. And uh, they did a lot of uh, different uh, research. Uh, for example, they, uh, they were looking on uh, age. They were looking on uh, educational background, they were looking on culture, they were trying to see if they could see patterns on which teams were performing the best. And uh, surprisingly, they couldn't find really any patterns. But after looking for a long time, they found out that it had nothing, the best teams had nothing to do with uh, the combination of age or education or anything like that. It had to do with one thing, which was psychological safety, which meant that the best performing teams and the teams that were uh, having the highest level of well-being, were feeling psychological safe in the team. Meaning that they felt that they, without risk, could share ideas, bring on questions, also stupid questions. They could ask uh, about uh, things if they didn't understand and so on. And they could make sure that the rest of the group would treat them well. And uh, the term psychological safety comes from uh, this lady, Amy C. Edmondson. She's a professor at Harvard Business School and she just came out recently with a book. If you wanna dig more into this, it's called The Fearless Organization. Uh, and uh, she started studying many, many years ago on hospitals, what happened on hospitals, uh, why are there so many mistakes and people don't report it. And she found out that the worst performing teams in hospitals were teams where people didn't feel safe then they would keep mistakes for themselves and they would keep on doing the same mistake over and over again. Whereas uh, on the other side, if you had a, a team where people felt safe, then they would uh, share if something went wrong and then they could learn from it and they could change it. So she defines psychological safety like this, the belief that one, oh, I can't even see my own slide here because of the, I have to move this two seconds, sorry. The belief that one will not be punished, humiliated, or blamed for speaking up with ideas, questions, concerns, or mistakes. So it's basically a work environment which is safe for interpersonal risk taking. And I believe she was looking at workplaces, but I believe that this is exactly also what we want to happen in meetings as well. 
Uh, this is the kind of energy, this is the kind of atmosphere. We want people to bring on their ideas and their concerns so we can get to the solution together fast. Bo, well, I think you are muted. Like this? Okay. Okay, so you found out that these, uh, the teams that felt geological safe, they make less mistakes, they learn faster because they ask to dare to uh, ask stupid questions. They also dare to make fails, uh, which is a, a, a default of in, in learning that you have to accept that you will make mistakes and you will make falls. And they also become more innovative because they dare to bring on the, the, the crazy ideas, the wild ideas, which doesn't happen if you don't feel safe. Then you always play the safe card uh, and, and try to avoid uh, humiliating yourself. So she also um, talks about what happens if a team doesn't have psychological safety. And we have some really severe examples uh, like this one, the, the, you probably heard about the Volkswagen Dieselgate scandal, where it turned out that in Volkswagen that, that for many, many, many years, uh, they were having, uh, they were bringing out false uh, data around uh, the effect of the, the diesel engines, how much C uh, carbon they would uh, emission, uh, how much carbon emission they would put out into the world. Uh, so it all turned out to be a big, big scandal where they had to rip roll a lot of cars. Uh, and it turned out that a lot of people in the organization knew about this mistake and no one dared to talk about it. Apparently because there was a leadership who were really aggressive. They were humiliating people if, if something went wrong and so on. So this is the kind of problems you can get into if you don't have psychological safety. And uh, to be a little bold here, I would even say that this is also what we see uh, to some extent in the White House at the moment, uh, that you should not talk against your boss uh, because it might have severe consequences. Uh, so, and that's not good for good decision making. So the question is, how do you build psychological safety? And Amy Edmondson, she has some uh, suggestions for that. First of all, she says that we have to frame any kind of work we're doing as a learning problem meaning that we have to accept that things can go wrong uh, and that uh, when things go wrong, it's simply a way to learn. It's not a big problem. We shouldn't blame anyone. Uh, it's a way where we can all grow together. So whereas if we look at things as an execution problem, then we don't accept failures. Then you also have to acknowledge your own fallibility as a leader, but also as, as a meeting participant or team participant and then you have also as a facilitator or a leader, you have to model curiosity in the group. And I'll give you some examples on how you can do that now. So now we get into the more concrete part if you're looking for that. So first of all, if you want to frame something as a learning problem, uh, you can start by recognizing that uh, in most cases, we are uh, working in a super complex world where we have a, a lot of uncertainty and we are interdependent. And so this means that we have to use everybody's brains and everybody has to uh, raise their voice and say whatever they have uh, to bring to the table. That's the best way for us to find solutions. So this is how most meetings in a modern world should be held. Uh, we should accept that we can only find the best solutions together. So this is like the objectives or the setting of the whole meeting. And then uh, in order to make people actually use their voice, because most people are afraid of speaking up. They are really afraid of making mistakes, especially in large groups with a lot of people they don't know already, like in most meetings and events. Uh, so how do you make people relax and feel safe? First of all, you can start by showing vulnerability. So if you as a facilitator or a manager shows vulnerability, then it opens up for other people to do the same as well. Uh, so that's why I brought this picture. This is from the beginning of the Corona crisis in Denmark. Uh, and my hair was growing longer and longer. So I got totally desperate. So I decided to raise my head uh, and, and, and cut it totally bold. 
uh, and uh, then I wanted to do something I never tried before to put a, a, a egg on my head like this. Uh, so it showed that I was desperate, uh, like a lot of other people. And uh, yeah, so this was part of my life. Uh, also, um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, also why we asked you to use uh, house space. And I don't think that many of you have done that already. But one of the great features about house space is that you can actually share more personal things. And we know that one thing that builds trust and safety in a group is if you show vulnerability and intimacy, meaning that you give something of yourself. So let me see if I can uh, step into, uh, if I can, I have to go out of this. Uh, I have to share uh, the house space because- do, Yes, you do, you want me, do you want me to share it for you, Paul? Oh, okay, you're doing it. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, so one way you can actually make people a little bit vulnerable. I mean, you don't want them to open up for the worst things in their life. You just want to make them give a little bit of yourself. So one way could be like, you've probably seen a lot of these pictures on the internet, people taking pictures out of the windows. And I think that's one of the great things about virtual and online meetings is that we actually get in, into people's homes which is a great way to get to know each other better. So that's one reason why it's a good idea to turn on the camera and also to actually use your normal background uh, and not uh, uh, use uh, something else. For example, this is from my living room. I live in a small apartment inside Copenhagen. Uh, and what you see here behind me is a picture. It was painted by my mom. Uh, I love my mom. And uh, she painted a biking picture because I love to bike. Uh, she wanted to make me happy, so she made this picture to me. Of, and uh, so it tells a lot about who I am as a person. You can see some books, so you can also tell that I like books. And I see some of you do that as well. And you can also take a picture out of your window. So I see Tommy here. You have a window. Uh, Tommy, what is it that we see here? Is that your garden? Can you turn on your sound and explain to us? Yes. That's the, uh, the garden view right outside my uh, desk that I get to, uh, to look at every day in this uh, work from home world. Wow, it looks nice. Uh, so you sit sometimes and work in those chairs or are you also always inside? No, I try to get out there as much as possible. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so we have a lot of other pictures here. We have Ilka. I can see uh, snow have come to uh, Finland. Is that your garden as well, Ilka? Yes, that's our garden. Yeah, it's also your houses in the background, or is that the other houses? They are other houses, so I'm okay. here upstairs in my in my room. So where is the sauna? Just under my my feet downstairs. <laughs> okay. Oh, you actually have a sauna? Yeah, of course, Peter. Okay. Okay. So of course. So we see a lot all, of all Finnishes apps of, of most people in Finland have saunas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at least one. Most of course. <laughs> I thought it was just a prejudice, but you kind of uh, confirmed it in a way. Uh, so we have here also Jane. You are in Sweden, as we can see, with rocks in the background, and then we have Melina. Melina, are you with us? Can you tell us what's that here from your window? Um, yes, it's um, the the view from. Hang on a minute. I'll get my camera to work. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Yes. Okay, yeah. good. It's the view from my uh, from my window where I sit and have my sessions when I have uh, people around for some uh, some training sessions. And uh, to be honest, I was actually going to go to a party at your place, mainly because we you, know, you uh, were. Yeah. <laughs> Just to look out the came, window. <laughs> when Corona came, so uh, it didn't happen. And actually, I live at the at the other side. We have like three lakes here in the center of Copenhagen, so I live here at the very other end. So we can almost see each other. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, my apartment for my apartment. And then, Paul, really quickly, what do we see here from your apartment? Uh, that's my apartment, yes. That's where, where I live in a house. And this is the upstairs where I have my home office. And this is, was a dull day. And uh, I took this picture to show you a little bit how the day was dull. But now it's becoming brighter. Yeah. 
Okay, but it's still cold. You were freezing before. I was freezing. It's cold. Yes, you know, in Madrid normally it uh, becomes when it's cold, it becomes real cold. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so then, uh, on the here, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I mean, if you have a large group, you maybe don't want everyone to go through the pictures and, and you can also have this going on before the meeting and after the meeting, like a lot of the activities we usually do on social media. So I really like about how space that you can actually do this, this as part of, uh, of the meeting, whereas you can do this in Zoom, for example, this is not possible there, you only have the meeting. So here you can do some uh, pre and some post activities, which are not only around the topic you're working on, but also creating relations and uh, psychological safety. Here on the other side, we have uh, another question, which is uh, please share a few words about what gives your energy during the pandemic. And uh, I think this is a nice way to tell something about yourself in a positive way. It gives you also an impression of the persons you're together with. And I know, uh, Ilka, maybe you can help me here, uh, that you have a, a artificial intelligence uh, uh, algorithm that can actually uh, deduct the main topics of all the text here. So we kind of get a, a, a full picture. Yeah, that's correct. And for example, we just had, had a, our monthly meeting last week. We have around 50 employees and we had two questions before the meeting. What is giving you energy? What is taking your energy? And then people were sharing stories like five sentences or so and then with ai that i can demonstrate if we have time made a summary in real time that okay th this is the summary of what, what is giving what is taking energy here is sentiment analysis so what seems to be the things people are concerned about and and what kind of themes you can find from the ones that are giving energy so for example having communication with colleagues seems to be the most important thing and it's it's important especially especially now Okay. So it's about stories and analyzing stories in real time. Could we do that now with this? Would that be possible? Uh, I think there's just a few sentences, nice images. So so maybe I could de demonstrate later when we have more like text-based content. So it might yeah. be more relevant. Okay. So anyway, so we have a uh, Hilka. Is that you here with the guitar? Yes. Yes, it's a Fender acoustic. Wow. It's my baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I, I guess that's a great activity to actually do here in, in lockdown and Corona times. Or uh, yes, yeah. I mostly play uh, folk and and uh, light rock. So, so um, yeah, I've been able to practice my guitar skills during uh, the lockdown. That's for sure. So. Okay, so uh, are you working on something right now? Or the guitar solo or uh, uh, something, uh, you know, beat it or something like that? <laughs> no, I'm not shredding it. <laughs> no, no. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not working on anything particular right now, but probably just improving my uh, picking technique. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because my son, he's trying to learn to play acoustic guitar right now, which I love. He's super enthusiastic. Only problem is that he tends to do it while I'm having online meetings and I have this small apartment. So <laughs> it's kind of challenging. Uh, okay. So, and then uh, it, it seems like we are having a lot of uh, dogs here actually. Uh, so we have Jane and we, I don't know who uh, Kno is. So who's Kno? Well, it's, it's me. Oh, it's Kenneth. Kenneth. Kenneth, yeah. I don't are know you why. From Denmark, Kenneth? You have a Danish name. No. Uh, no, I'm actually from Finland, so from, okay. from Vasa, yeah. I know people in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, we, this is from, from, from the autumn, so we have a dog, dog, and of course, it's, 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 it's nice. And also I put a link to the window swap, but I, I, I look out, out of others' windows, so I can go to any window uh, in, in the world and look out. From other windows, you have a you have a link there in the in the chat. So, okay, that's uh, that's 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 a good. Well, sometimes can, you can Kenneth, go anywhere in the world. Yeah. Yes, Kenneth, please share it also on the outspace because uh, the chat disappears and the outspace will stay for at least another couple of weeks more. Yeah, but it's here in the outspace. Oh, it's in the outspace already. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, yep. thank you yep, so yep. much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, what's the name of your dog, Kenneth? It's Al Ali. 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 And I call her Ali the Cool because she's very cool. <laughs> okay. But it's Ali. Ali. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess it's good to have dogs here in Corona times because then you're forced to get out and take. Yeah, them. of course. And uh, the the dog is liking this because she can stay at home, and I'm always at home because I work as a teacher and we have. We work remotely just now, so all, all my students are out there, and I, I, I'm using Zoom. And actually, house space. I have just we have just a, 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 a education in, in the morning about house space. We have just uh, implemented this to our organization, so that's 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 nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. So, and I also see uh, Jane have a dog as well, and uh, Paul had a, a two dogs here, so. And uh, actually, we know from the psychology, if uh, you can make people find things they have in common, then you can uh, make them connect better. So that's also a way you can facilitate. And I definitely think that pictures like this helps a lot. Uh, we also, they also found out, psychologists uh, in their research, that the more specific and the more weird it is that the things they have in common, the more people will connect. So, uh, for example, I was uh, working the other day with a technician and he had the same name like me, you know, he was also Bo, which is a seldom name in Denmark now because no one is calling their kids Bo anymore. It's a, a way too boring name. It's too short. Uh, so, but then we connected because we had the same name. Uh, for example, they, they found out that if soldiers, uh, you know, if you've been a soldier together, people will usually connect. You will connect even more if you've been into battle together. You will connect even more if you were having a near death experience together and survive, obviously. Uh, then people will connect, connect even more. So, uh, so this is one of the tricks you can use if you want people to connect to make them find things they have in common. Uh, and for that reason, I think it's super cool, Ilka, that you actually have an algorithm that helps finding the patterns. So the computer will actually help you find out what is it that people have in common. I think that's uh, super interesting. Okay, and here myself, uh, I do some mountain biking, which is actually from Sweden, an older picture here. Uh, okay, so this is just an example. So let's move on. I want to show you some more things you can do. Um, that, and I, my experience is that people sometimes skip these things. Uh, a lot of people tell me that online meetings are more effective because they're shorter. But the problem is, if we, it means that we are skipping all this soft stuff around the meeting, all the things that actually create psychological safety, builds trust and relations, then we are having a problem. Uh, and I think that's also a cool thing about, for example, half space, that you can do some of this stuff before the meeting and after the meeting. So you don't have to take, to take too much time from the meeting in itself. All right, so here are three things you can consider. And you, we already talked about this, turn on your camera and also use your natural background unless you don't wanna show what's behind you. Uh, I actually had one client the other day and she literally told me that she was doing online training and her husband came out of the, uh, the bath naked behind her. <laughs> and she didn't notice before everyone was like going like this. So it happens sometimes. So there might be good reasons why you don't wanna do that. And then, of course, all sorts of small talk. Uh, so uh, I sometimes ask people if they want a small talk to enter the meeting 10 minutes before everyone else. And then you can small talk before the real meeting starts. And then you can give something of yourself uh, like we just did. OK, so uh, another thing that Amy Edmondson, she mentions is that we should model curiosity, meaning that we should create an environment where we are eager to learn, to understand things and explore things. Uh, so there are a few things you can do. You can ask questions. Um, I don't want to introduce that to, to you. You know probably already how to ask open-ended questions and explorative questions. We can do experiments. Um, a lot of people told me actually uh, that uh, one thing they enjoyed about all this uh, online activities was that everyone started from uh, learning point zero. So we had this experimental culture where you can make a lot of failures and mistakes. Uh, so actually also entering a new software can sometimes be a cool thing to do together because then we are all in a position where we are curious and learning new stuff, uh, which is a good place to be together as a group. 
And then you can be playful. Uh, Amy Edmondson, she doesn't mention that in her book, but uh, uh, I know from experience and also from a lot of research that being playful is one of the best ways to make people connect. Because when we're playful and play together, then we do things that are a little bit out of our comfort zone. So we actually show vulnerability. And if we're playing a good game, then we're actually having fun at the same time, which is one of the best things you can do in order to create a good atmosphere in a group. So now I'm going to try a few online uh, virtual energizers and games you can do. Uh, so let me see. So uh, first we're going to try one uh, which is called the mole. And uh, in order to play this game, you have to uh, turn on your cameras and you have to put on gallery view. Can you do that? So if you all put on gallery view and then stretch the picture so you can see as many faces as possible. Uh, if best, you can see everyone. And uh, I know a few of you, you can't do that. So, but you can still uh, see what the rest of us do and uh, get something fun out of it. Um, okay, so uh, if, do you know the mole game? You know, you have a mole sticking his head up from the ground uh, mm -hmm. and then you have a hammer and you're supposed to bang the, the mole in the head, you know? And the one who does that the fastest uh, gets the point. So we're gonna play the same game. And I think uh, Joe, Joe, you are going to battle Alexandra Freitas. Okay, can you turn off, uh, can you turn on your mics, Alexandra and Joe? Okay. Yes. Hello. Okay, so oh, maybe you should stop sharing so we see more people on the screen because I okay, still yeah, see. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for <laughs> saying that. Yeah. Uh, I'll stop screen. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, that's better. Yeah, cool. yeah. Thank you for saying that. All right. So, uh, Joe. Uh, oh, let me see. I need. Uh, yeah, oh, Alexander, okay, because you moved. Joe and Alexander, it goes like this, that all of us, we will take our heads, we will duck and take our heads under the picture like this, right? Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. So every now and then you will put your head up. For example, now I'm having my head up. And then Alexander and Joe, you are going to say as fast as possible the name of me. And the one who says it first gets the point, right? So whenever some, when you say my name, I will duck again. Okay, you got it. All right. Let me see if I if I understand. I have to to say your name when you are up. Yeah. So whenever someone putting their head up, you say the name, and then they have to talk again. Okay. Okay. Jane. Then. Oh. Pika. Kenneth. <laughs> Jane. Tommy. Pika. Hika. Bo. Bo. Tommy. Kenneth. Paulo. <laughs> Paul. Kent. Bo. Hika. Jane. Tommy. Hika. Tommy. Paulo. Kenneth. Hika. Hika. Bo. Bo. Tommy. Tommy. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. I think we got it. We got it. I think that they were not seeing Malene. Malene, she was several times up, but they didn't say, say her name. Her, her name does oh, not show. I'm sorry. You are oh, your name does not show, Malene. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, it, do. it does. And, you know, sometimes in international groups, you don't know exactly how to pronounce a name, which can give challenges as well. Uh, so this game was actually inv invented by one of my clients uh, and he wanted to take advantage of the situation, everyone being in the camera. And I think it's a fun game because uh, I work a lot also with how are the well-being when people are at home now in Corona times. And one thing people miss a lot is actually physical activity. So if we in any way can put physical activities into our meetings, uh, then it's great. Okay, I'm gonna try one more game. I think we have time for that. Just one more. Um, so again, we uh, keep the cameras turned on. And uh, this is kind of a collaboration activity uh, because we are going to see if we can do the same movement, all of us, without uh, planning on what to do. And there are basically three things you can do. You can either do jazz hands like this. You can try that, can you do jazz hands, all of you? Yeah, okay. Uh, or you can bow because uh, you are uh, you are also uh, 
you are you are you are so uh, excited to be with all these people, great people. So you bow, yeah. Or you can give a virtual hug like this. Can you do that? A virtual hug. Okay. So we have three things you can do: either jazz hands, you can bow, or virtual hug. Now I will count to three, and you will do one of these things. And the task for all of us is to see if we can do the same thing without planning, which is extremely hard. So we might try a few times, okay? So uh, think about what you want to do. So now think, what do you think the rest will be doing? That's your challenge right now, okay? I count to three and you do one of these three things. One, two, three. Okay, we didn't exactly get it. So we're going to try once more, see if we can do it. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay, we got a, a final try, a final try. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, yeah. We didn't get it, but it doesn't matter because we have hopefully had a little bit of fun while we did that. And that's the only thing that really matters. Uh, the best games is not about winning, it's only about having fun. Uh, so be careful about uh, making too much competition <laughs> out of it because then it's not fun anymore. Uh, then it's about winning and losing and uh, then only the winners will have fun and the losers will not like the game so much. So it's not really important. So this was just two examples on how you can uh, use games to do something different in a meeting and hopefully create a little bit of psychological safety. So now it's up for you to judge whether you feel more safe in the group after we looked at pictures from our homes and so on and doing short things like this, instead of me just talking, showing you PowerPoints. Uh, I, I don't believe it works very well in terms of uh, creating psychological safety. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bo. Show of hands for Bo and Granga uh, in recognition of his uh, sharing, great sharing here. And now conscious of time and to finish uh, within the 90 minutes and uh, we have right on time right now. Uh, Jane will take the 30 minutes and we have 15 minutes planned for the harvesting, which I would probably uh, trust that Jane will do the harvesting for all of us because she has very good questions for harvesting after the breakout she's going to host. So I'll pass to Ilka in order to, to Ilka to show us a little bit more about the outspace we have created because I have a task for you, Ilka. I would like you to create a feedback a, a feedback page so uh, uh, the participants in the end can share a little bit of feedback, right? And I give you a tip. There's already a feedback page created from a different uh, from a previous event. Maybe you can take advantage of that and explain how we can recycle uh, the pages in our space for uh, um, different moments in the, in a workshop. Is that okay? So 15 minutes for you, Ilka, and Jane, you'll take the 30 minutes in the end and we'll conclude with you. Okay. All right, thanks, thanks, Paul. So I hope you all are at the same time in house space and there's, you can find a page called share and gain uh, in the top menu and let me know if if someone doesn't have access to house space, I can send you invitations in there. And I think one of the main challenges, whether we are in, in a workshop or in a meeting or even in an event, is that normally there's space for one person to talk at a time. So we are wasting a lot of energy and knowledge with, with this kind of traditional method. And then uh, if you have something to say, all you do is, is wait. So if there's 15 people in a meeting and, and you are the last one, it might take half an hour that you have your space. And if you imagine about like a global management meeting with 200 people together and one is talking and others are listening, it's really an effective way to work together. So in this share and gain page, I thought that we could have an example that instead of talking, if we are quiet together for, let's say, four minutes, and then we share our experiences by writing, it's, it's a really powerful way of working, being together online silently. And by that, we are able to, to learn from each other a lot. So uh, uh, I hope you are now on this page. 
and uh, am I? I'm not sharing my screen yet, so I will. I will do it. Uh, Paul, can you give me rights for sharing? Uh, oh, sorry, I thought that you were co-host, uh, but you left the session, and then I didn't make yeah, you yeah. host. Yeah, uh, You are yeah. now a co-host again. I lost uh, my connection. Apologize for that. Yeah, yeah, my bad. So here's the page, and uh, so. Uh, when I created this during this session, and how I did it was that uh, I selected from our 16 widgets that what could we need now, and what kind of features in these. So I just picked up a timer, drag it on the page, and then two chat widgets. And now I will turn the, the timer on, trying to be quiet for four minutes, so that we can write and share our learnings and our dreams. So I will mute myself so that I'm not going to disturb you.
Ika, if you're speaking, you're muted. Thanks, sorry. So uh, the time is over and, and as you can see, how much was shared in only four minutes instead of one talking at a time. And now um, what I will do is I will enable you a feature that is or actually several AI features. So uh, now... Would you like to share your screen now, Ilka? Yeah, I could do it. So you can see the uh, behind the curtains as well. Yeah. So uh, what I, I was doing is that I, as an administrator, I will go to edit this discussion and I can decide that what kind of features are we using. So we have likes on, so if you would like, like others' comments, it's possible. You can reply. We could use points for prioritization or ranking stuff and so on. But I can also give you rights to use AI-based word clouds, clustering, sentiment analysis. And what does that mean is that, uh, of course, you can read everything through and, and like things you like and reply to, to other things. So uh, one magical thing is that instead of uh, having all the features available all the time, you can start by just adding what your thoughts. Then you turn replies on, then you turn likes on, then you can sort by likes and, and so on. So having like iterations of the same dialogue and having a meaning why you are reading others' comments. So you have a task to do, not only to read. But with AI, you can do much more. So now when you click these, these three dots, you can find word cloud theme clustering, sentiment analysis from there. And if we start from word cloud, so you can find that what are we talking about? And it's not only visualization, it's also a user interface. And it's done with support of uh, trained models, machine learning. So now, if I'm, for example, interested in, uh, let's say, content, I click the word, I can back, back to the original discussion, see content highlighted, and then I can reply uh, to, to uh, comments that are mentioning content or whatever the word is. So we can have like several rounds of checking out that what you are interested in and please reply and like the things that you find from there. And then if that is not enough, then what you can do is open the theme cluster and it's creating themes that what are we talking about? So meeting, virtual meetings, content, people, participation, energy, and so on. And as an administrator, I can uh, play with this. So I can decide that is it automatic or how many themes I would like to find? Is it only comments or replies or both? And then there's like unsupervised AI model that we are now using or a trained model. And if you have opened it already, then you can refresh or come back to there. So there's like trained models. So 32% is about meetings and gatherings and involvement and connections and, and so on. And once you find something that you would like to continue or learn more, you click the join the discussion button and you will see the comments related to this theme. And then you can reply. And if there's longer comments, it's picking up and highlighting just the parts of the comments that are related to this theme. And you can imagine having like 500 people online or in a meeting in a seminar at the same time. And then you can like create huge amount of understanding and sense making about what's happening in the room. And, and then you can go like deeper to the, those themes or words that you are interested in. And then uh, I'll do the same change here for this other discussion about the dreams and, and, and so on. And enable also these AI features from there. And now it could be also about sentiments. So, uh, and it's not like traditionally, it could be positive, negative, neutral. What is useful for this kind of learning and, and development projects is that we are interested about appreciation and concerns, not, not like judging or giving stamps to, to foreheads of people that you are negative and, and you are positive, but, but finding things. So concerns are really valuable for, for learning and development. And then we can like 
validate the analysis by accepting what AI has been doing and then we can find that okay what are the topics we are concerned about and what are the topics that uh, we appreciate already. So this can, can be really helpful and the, the larger your group is the, the more useful these kind of features can become either in real time or asynchronous way of working. Absolutely. This is why we feel that for the event uh, host, for the, uh, the the person that needs to host a, a mid-size to large event, this kind of AI uh, built-in platforms are could be useful. And that's what we would like to challenge you. And that I'm sure that Jane will have more discussions for this. Ilke, you still have one minute to, to fulfill the time. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. So... Um... We have been developing technology for this kind of use for more than two decades and and it's really wonderful today we have like thousands of facilitators and consultants around the globe who are helping us to realize all the possibilities and different options that what what could be helping them and they, their clients to do work in a totally different mind-blowing way in real time how to speed up the processes and how to create connections and and how to make sense of, of the world around us. And it, it's it's awesome. Definitely. Thank you so much, Ilke. And just to remind you, Ilke is a co-author on my latest book, which is Beyond Virtual Meetings. So if you want to learn more about uh, Outspace, it's uh, the uh, uh, full chapter with lots of information on Outspace and digital facilitation, which is a concept that was pioneered by Ilke. And you can find more in this uh, book that I wrote, uh, uh, Beyond Virtual Meetings. You can find it in Amazon quite easily. Jane, without further ado, yes, over to you, you, last part of our workshop, 30 minutes in the hands of Jane Cunningham. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, I hope you're all still with me. Have a wiggle, have a stretch, throw your arms in the air if you feel you need a bit more energy. Bo did some great stuff with this mole hammering, which is definitely an interesting game, and I must try it at, at a meeting another time. But I'm going to show you some PowerPoint slides, then we'll go into a breakout for about 10 minutes, come back, I've got a short video, and then we'll have time for a little bit of discussion and any questions that we have about how space, any questions for Bo, and just an open, an open discussion. Now, I'm sharing today some, um, really some outcomes and some information around the, the global forum that I helped organise for Best Cities last week, of which, Tommy, I'm sorry, you may be hearing some information you already saw, but I'm going to go through some of those areas today. Now, I wanted to start by sharing this uh, quote, um, because I think it's pretty much what's happened to us. You know, your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. And this is from Back to the Future. And the reason I wanted to share this is at our global forum uh, last week, we had this wonderful speaker from, sorry, I'm just uh, keep missing the slides. Uh, we had this wonderful speaker called Sue Hoon, and she's the founder of WIT, which is basically a community of people that are passionate about travel, travel tech, distribution, and marketing. And of course, with COVID and with the meetings industry pretty much being made illegal from one day to the next, we all had to reinvent how we engage, how we connect. And she created this, this WIT um, Experience Week. And when she was trying to engage with all these delegates from all around the world, she decided to ask them this one question. What words do you associate with travel 2025? And they all came up with different words, whether it be sustainable or less frequent or by train or whatever it was, they all came up with different words and they created this art piece, which was then sold for $50,000, which then went to a cancer, uh, went to a charity, sorry, I'm not sure what, what charity it was. But the wonderful thing was, is that she engaged with the community and everyone was all in to do that. And this is what I really want to talk about today is how do we try and create some kind of buzz when we're not attending meetings face to face. So I mentioned a little bit around my, um, my background. Um, so I just have a slide here that shows a couple of the areas that I'm particularly passionate about. I've been in the meetings industry for a long time. I'm passionate about meeting legacy. And, and I just wanted to share that Best Cities is part of an award program that's about 
celebrating conferences that have a longer lasting impact on destinations and on the communities where these conferences are held. We're also looking to see if we can find ways where actually connecting communities digitally can also have an impact. Um, I'm also an ambassador for the Joint Meeting Industry Council to try and promote uh, within governments to the understanding of how conferences can really help rebuild uh, communities and especially after, after COVID and once we get meeting again, how can we make sure that we are facilitating, and this is when facilitation comes into it, engagements and building bridges and creating broader stakeholder engagement to really have more of an impact on society. Uh, I've got a picture of Spotify here because I also facilitate leadership uh, workshops uh, through a company called Lawrenceburgs in Stockholm, and they have a number of different clients, Spotify being one. So uh, going back a little bit to what Bo was talking about, it's creating this engaging environment so that people feel very in, in a very trusted environment where they're able to share and learn and really develop themselves personally and professionally from the activities that we do. So Best Cities Global Forum, we uh, were online for two days, for three days, sorry. And normally, because Best Cities is an alliance of convention bureaus, so they are the main marketing bureau in the destination to try and attract conferences, not only for the economic impact, but also for the broader societal impact that conferences bring. And this kind of conference, which Tommy attended last year in Copenhagen, actually, is normally a hugely immersive conference. You're tasting wonderful food, you're smelling the smells of the city, you're meeting local people, you're experiencing like Copenhill that you would never have the opportunity or really understand what it's all about until you're there. And then we had to completely change and say, how do we connect the association community that hold these conferences and trying to offer value to their members while connecting them with our 12 cities across the world? So we came up with this conference and, and really we asked our community, what do they want? What works? How can we create something that is of value? How can we give you content that's of interest to you? And also how can, you can, how can we connect you with other associations so that you can learn and share from one another? So we did a three day program with a different topic on each day for two hours each day. And we also mixed it with completely virtual to a hybrid offering. So when I was showing you Si Hoon, the founder of uh, WIT, that was in the Singapore virtual, uh, in, the, in the Singapore um, virtual meeting area, but they also had, had guests there too. So it was like a hybrid meeting. They had people in the room, whereas, and we were being brought in virtually. And we uh, broke the, the conference down into three topics. So the first topic was, transform and of course at this time businesses organizations everybody's looking at how do we add more value and uh, we had Renata Lurch who was a fantastic speaker and she talked about looking at the need versus solution and really trying to understand your products and services and how that they are um how they are adding value to, to, your, to your members. So we talked a lot about that. We talked about leveraging partnerships and by creating engagement and, and facilitating group work to, for people to be able to really think how, how does learning from other industries really help me in my day-to-day -day and how could I change what my value proposition to, to my members? So that was day one, talking about different business models, which everybody is still considering at the moment. So that seemed to be a, a successful day. And then on day two, it was about engagement. So we had the wonderful David Mead. If you have not heard him speak, he is an international speaker. He's, he's a mentalist. He's a mind reader and extremely energetic. And by him doing a session, which I think was for about half an hour, he shared lots of different tips and tricks of how to engage people. And I just want to share a couple of things that he said, of which actually one of them uh, was similar to Bo, but he said three, three key areas, fight, fight, for, fight for live. So where possible, we should be organizing meetings where the speakers are live. They're there, they're speaking at this point, like we're doing today fight for cameras on because we have a far more engaging um, experience when people can see each other and they can connect 
with each other and also fight for quality. If you have speakers and they're in a dark room and you can't really see them or you can't really hear them very well, then that's not really going to help to engage the audience to, um, to want to be part of the session. He also shared some, some other uh, stats. He said that we are extremely distracted at the moment, especially we're also working from home. So there's lots of other distractions around us, but he shared that we are checking emails something like 30 to 45 times an hour. We unlock our phone in the working hour, um, in a working hour, uh, about 20 times. Um, he also shared that there was a Stanford study that said, for us to focus on one topic only, uh, we can do so for around seven to eight minutes. So that's why we really need to be only speaking for a short period and then changing to something else and then coming back to another topic. And he also shared that he felt that when it comes to, to polls and different engagement like that, when it's a live meeting, that where possible, we should be doing uh, human to human. So um, like Bo and Paul did as well, we have to put our hands up, we have to do things together, not necessarily doing polls, which is human to system. So he's shared some really interesting um, information with us. And I think we are all experiencing different ways of working, different things that uh, have helped us to engage more. And the first networking that we did here at the start of this session, um, and I think she mentioned it as sharing as well, is that when somebody's handwriting as well, using a flip chart, I think that's something that can also help people engage because you're moving away from just looking at someone on, on the screen to actually somebody writing up in a flip chart. Somebody shared with me on a Zoom call, if you block your own camera, you're more likely to focus on everybody else in the room, not being distracted because you've got your own face up there. Um, and there was another tip that somebody shared that if everybody comes into the meeting and actually says hello <laughs> with, their, with their cameras and microphones on, that that also makes a little bit more engagement. So uh, trying to create this, this space that you, you, you have everybody in there and they are committed because also people go from one meeting uh, and then suddenly they're straight into another meeting. So you have to try and give them time. Like Bo was saying, can, you need to have this time to create a space where people can get to know the others in the room and, and, and I suppose the build the psychological safety to make it easier for them, easier for them to connect. So I just want to, at this point, uh, stop talking myself and uh, I'll stop sharing this at the moment because I would like you to go into small meeting rooms and just have the opportunity to share some tips or maybe we only have time to share one tip each, but maybe you could share something that you've either experienced or you've, you've heard that's worked really well about engaging you on an online meeting. And then perhaps we could then, Paul, share that on house space under you can maybe tell me exactly how we should put that in definitely uh whilst uh, the participants are in the breakouts you and i jen will create easily a, a, a page uh, and also with the help of ilke i think Ilke is still with us a page for sharing the, the outcomes of the breakouts we can decide that together so jen uh, me and ilke please stay in the main room the rest of the participants please join a breakout uh, i would create i would say uh, three breakouts jane perhaps because okay. it's it will be uh, more, a little bit more people in each breakout, breakout and you can have interactions. And the time is for 10 minutes, right? Yeah, maybe we could maybe do seven minutes, maybe 10 minutes is a bit too long, do seven okay. minutes. So seven minutes for the discussions on the breakouts. You are now all invited to attend the breakout, except uh, Jane, please stay and uh, Ilka as well, because we are going to do a space uh, page for the sharings. Great. Uh, Ilke is no oh Ilke is still here with us I hope no oh, Ilke yeah I am yeah so what what uh, what would be the suggestion for um, the, to collect from the breakouts Ilke uh, maybe it could could be a separate page in the workspace okay. should I could, should I do you, it do you want to do it should I do it can you do it uh, if you share your screen and if you do it I advise if needed. Okay, though. So let me let me share my screen on the all space here, and okay, okay. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, and and, and uh, oh, hold on a minute because I have to do something else in the moment, which is not to have this on live. Sorry. 
I mean, it would be also interesting to have this on live stream, but anyway, just <laughs> recording now for ourselves. Okay. Okay, so we have here share and gain, which I've already some comments and uh, interesting questions that I have. What, what was the question you started in the breakout, uh, Jane? Just sharing experience? Yes, it was just sharing one tip on engagement for engaging. Really. Actually, I think if you go to edit lay layout of this page, it might be already in here. And it was hidden, so share your tips here. Okay, ah, yes, let, let's make that visible. Let's make that visible. Yes. And, yeah. and you can drag it on, on the top of the on page. The top. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. That's it. Easy, easy, easy one, this one here. Yeah, and actually, okay. you could you could remove the let's write uh, widget and two breakout instructions. So just to reduce the amount of noise, go to edit page layout. And let's kill that here, right? Yes. Okay. And you can uh, move the share the serial tips to the upper one. So it's taking the full width and, and then removing the timer widget. It's not needed anymore. So keep keeping it noiseless. Keep it noiseless. I like that style. Okay, good. And we'll hide this one here or should they leave it because they might have still more ideas? Yeah, yeah. I think it could be left in there. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much. Is there anything else, Hilke, Jane, you would like to add to this page, the out space? I know, I think, I think that's fine. Uh, Paul, you were suggesting about some feedback. Did you have already that page under the... We yeah. have here, check out. You want to do that? Uh, yeah. So if you just go and duplicate this page. Uh, page settings? Uh, no, it's in the, it's a, on the bottom of pages in the central. In, in the center, duplicate page. Oh, duplicate page, okay. Yeah. And this will do check out and experience 25 nov, right? Yeah, yes. Will it duplicate with the results or it will be a clean page? It will be clean. Fantastic. Now we can take that page and uh, put it... Uh, Go to edit, edit menu. And if you remove the, yeah, and you can remove the check check in our last event, you can take the whole folder and drag it to the storage, so to the bottom, yes. So keeping it clean. Fantastic, great tips. Okay, so in the end, they will invi be invited here and they will take the mm. cool. Yes. Okay, anything else? I think that's it. it. Okay, so uh, let's check the time. Give him my four more, more minutes, right? Okay, yeah. I'm just sharing so I can go here and I'll go away again. Okay. Okay, super. When I had my presentation on, I hate when I don't see everybody else. I must try and make sure that when I share my screen, I can still see gallery view. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky to have that the gallery view and the shared screen at the same time, but you can configure Zoom to that. To that uh, yes, function. I need to do that. I find it a bit weird when I can't see anyone. <laughs> yes. Well, then we still have here with us Gundrum. She, she's been here with us, I mean, he, at least uh, logged in with two user accounts, but I have not able to see her or watch her. Good room. Are you here with us? Okay. Because I know Bo knows you personally. Good room. You're from Austria, right? Okay. Maybe see. Okay. 
on discussing about the events, virtual events, Jane, uh, there was this uh, saying that uh, in a physical event, you take yourself and go to the event. So you prepare physically. Whereas a virtual event, it's the event that gets inside your own. And sometimes this gets us a little bit unprotected for uh, sharing and showing the camera or whatever, because I'm not in the proper dressing, you know. Yes, exactly. I remember it was Miguel Neves that said that to me. Exactly. You know, when, it's Miguel. It was Miguel. It's Miguel, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saying that they're a guest in your, at your event, but suddenly when you're presenting to people, you're a guest in their house all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh -huh. Different One story about uh, different virtual events, you know, there has been so many different kinds of things like we've, we've been running national parents meet up for the schools and, and so on. Today was the most weird uh, question coming from a prospect asking that could they have a dog show in house space with 400 dogs in there? <laughs> And your answer was, of course. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Gosh. Just wondering, are they using touch screens? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, a dog show, really? Could you do that one? I can't imagine that working. Crazy. Okay, now it's going back live to our live viewers not feeling sad because I've suddenly closed the transmission and I got a couple of complaints. I apologize, dear viewers. It's sometimes um, sometimes it's uh, hard to think about uh, you out there watching us and uh, enjoying these conversations and these contents. Ilka, you're back. Hilke, Hilke with H. Oh, yeah. Is that me? Yes, I'm back. <laughs> How do you pronounce your name? Hilke? Hilke? Yes, yes. Hilke. It's same as Hilke. <laughs> Set very close, very close. <laughs> yes. It could be, it, it, it is probably the, the same name, but we did in a different version for, it, for the different countries. We it it is. The female is Hilke. Or oh, it's really Hilka, okay. and the male is Ilka. <laughs> so Hilka is a, also a Finnish name, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. And you're in Toronto, and your surname seems quite Scottish. <laughs> yep, that's my father. Very <laughs> oh, good. My mother's from Finland. Very <laughs> good. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's interesting. For female, is it H, and male, is it without H? Correct. Yes, that's okay. right. Yeah. Oh, I just got the timer to say that we have one minute to call it, call the, the participants. So I'm going to close the breakouts now, and um, I'll send okay. a message. Okay, and then I'll ask people to um, put their tip onto house face, and then maybe I can share the screen so we can see what we get. Yeah. Okay, yes, let's, let's close the rooms and ask them to, uh, to share, please share. Oh, space. Okay. Oh, and we're finishing it um, in eight 30. minutes. Yeah, in eight minutes. Would that be enough for you to? That's okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well. You have a video to show, right? Yes. Oh, it's only two minutes. That's okay. But it's just about meeting legacy. I thought it'd be a nice thing to end on. We will end up with your meeting. Is that okay? Say again? We will end with your meeting. Is that okay? With your video. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's do that. It's a good way to end. And the participants and their life will see also the video. So that's yeah. fine. Okay. Sounds good. So welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Excellent. We are now live on Facebook also, so our viewers from Facebook can take advantage of this, uh, the sharing that we're going to do here about this workshop. Super. So at this point, it would be good if we could go to House Space again, and we've just put a, a page where you can add your tips um, in there, which would be really good if you could do that. I'm just going to have a look and see 
I can maybe share my screen. Sure you can. Okay, so everybody's coming back here. So I was just saying it would be good if you could put your tips into house base. There we go. Thank you, Tommy. He's got some tips in there. Excellent. Good. And actually, if anybody, while people are writing in, if anybody wants to share verbally, please let me know. There's not many of us here. Does anyone want to share a tip? No. Or you can read the ones that were already shared, Jane. Yes, I can, certainly. Let me have a look. I'll go back here, sorry. Let's see what we've got. Okay, actually I can, sorry, I'm moving around here, but I'll share my screen. I think that might be a good idea. And then everybody can just see what we've, what we've got here. It's so interesting that we could share something uh, uh, not in the chat of the Zoom because sharing in the chat of the Zoom for me sometimes is a waste because so many good comments are lost there. People forget to save their chat uh, text files and then it's a cumbersome format, the chat, so difficult to take advantage. Whereas if we share in a, in a shared space like this, our space we have created for this event, we can revisit it a couple of days after and had more ideas. So the conversation is actually ongoing. We do not stop this conversation when I close the breakout, uh, the, the Zoom session today. The conversation can go on on our space. And that's, yeah. I think, a, a message that we would like to leave you. Jane? Yeah, absolutely. So you can just see here in the sharing gain where just people are just putting in different comments. So please feel free to add um, certainly, as both saying, variation is good, keeping attention, changing the format every 15 to 20 minutes, visual experience is important, tricks support that experience. So I think there is good design and content. So thank you very, thank you very much for putting the information in there. Now we are coming to the end of the session. I had a few more slides, but I'm going to skip that because there's a short video that I would really like to show you. I did say that my passion lies with meeting impact and making sure that when people gather and when people meet, that it's not just in that one meeting and then nothing's taken forward, that actually we can create a bit more of a bit more of an impact afterwards. And I just want to share something from Copenhagen. Um, it's their legacy lab. And there's a very short video here that I would like to share. And then we'll come back to say final goodbyes. So uh, if you give me two seconds, I'll just share my screen because the video is here. And the video was here. Sorry, sorry. Where have I done it? Put it now. Hold on a second. Sorry, I think I've... Oh dear, time's running out and then I can't find something. That's not very good, is it? That's okay. I think um, we can stay one or two minutes longer and uh, no one will get oh. uh, fired by that. Oh gosh, sorry. Let me try and find it again. I'm my own employee, so I might fire myself. Yes, I might fire myself. Uh, it's it's really a shame because I also I thought that I have it here and as a backup, uh, Jane, and I cannot find it too. Oh my god! Oh dear, it, sorry. It could be sorry. shared later on if you have a link or if you embed yeah, yes. to our space. Yeah. Uh, should we jump to the uh, check out and and uh, feedback page? So you can find in house space there's check out and experience 25th November. So it would be really nice to get your feedback. So there's two polls in there and then two open ended questions about your experience about house space and Zoom and, and your takeaways. Would be great to, to see what how how you experienced this session. Okay. Jane, have you found your video? I found it. Okay, because my screen is now frozen. I think I've been trying to find it. So could you show I, it? I, I found the video. I can show it okay. when, uh, whenever you, you want. Yeah, you can show it now. Okay, so let me then um, share my screen here as I have it uh, not shared. Okay, so what, whilst I'm sharing this, please go to the page of feedback and uh, kindly have your inputs. 
uh, apologize to Alexandra because she was asking me before to share the screen and I was so distracted that I could not see the, the chat. I think you are now on our space, Alexandra. Thank you so much. And now let me share with computer sound. That's a thing that we need to do whenever we share videos and uh, uh, optimize screen for video clip. And I hope that you are now seeing the video. Is it okay? We are here today with representatives from ALA, Nestle, SSI and the Children's Hospital in Odense, among others, to explore how this Congress can leave a positive legacy in Denmark and for the local communities that this Congress relates to. I think it's a fantastic way of bringing people together in a workshop. I mean, defining what could the legacy uh, of a Congress be and making sure that so many different types of stakeholders, whether it be organizations or companies or academia, creating impact workshops is a great way and tool of actually not only bringing people together, but uh, to get great ideas of what could be created together with the Congress. It's incredibly important to make sure that all all the knowledge and all the networking and the sharing that take place in the venue at the Congress also is shared with either the rest of the global community in, in uh, this particular field or with the Danish public or with ministerials or with uh, local governments, with many of the research societies. We believe that if we are strong in working with legacy and working with congresses on using this as a strategic tool, then this can also be something that gives us a competitive advantage in terms of attracting even more congresses. Collected a lot of inspiration from other congresses. What have others succeeded doing in terms of engaging with the local community? And we're going to use that as inspiration for coming up with new and interesting activities for this specific congress. You come up with a lot of different ideas and some of them may work and others may not work but then you also get inspired by the others ideas and that can generate your own ideas as well. I think it's uh, intriguing and uh, very interesting how new ideas uh, came up and how the group was able to interact and uh, actually produce something novel. Well I'm bringing with me it's a sort of cementing the fact that this is the way forward when we work with international association congresses and the fact that there are many stakeholders who really have a genuine interest in um, contributing to congresses having a wider societal effect. Fantastic video. Yes, thank you. Thank you for showing it. Um, I think it just proves that facilitation is key. And what we now want to do is see how we can actually do that kind of legacy workshop online by engaging the right people that have uh, that are able to create this change after conferences. So let's see, but I just wanted to share that with you because I think any meeting that we have, we can be looking at what else can we do, be doing that creates more, more of an impact. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you all. And um, you can all see the results in the outspace of your own results. So you can see that we have a great um, feedback from you. Thank you so much for taking the time to joining you here with us. Uh, this is uh, what we want to mean with uh, beyond Zoom meetings is a meeting like this. So uh, of course we have a wealth of expertise in our guest speakers and I thank so much Ilke for being here and Jane Cunning and Bo Kruger for being so generous in sharing such a wonderful uh, uh, tips, content, and uh, knowledge. Thanks, uh, Kenny. Yes, a round of applause to our to our uh, guest speakers. Uh, uh, a real applause. Uh, but also, I'd like to give an applause to you, dear participants, for taking your time to join and participating in our space because you did so well. In fight, insightful comments also there. And, and, and this group, this community stays on, right? Uh, stay yeah, in tune yeah. because uh, uh, we are preparing a great Congress on digital facilitation later in December. It will also be a solstice winter uh, celebration and uh, you will be all invited and we'll remain these conversations in the 21st of December. That's the next date. I would like you to put you on your calendars. Okay, uh, Jane, question. So, uh, question. Ilke, anything else you'd like to say to say goodbye to the group? 
Oh, I heard somebody ask a question, I think. I about you. So we can join the, 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 the house based community just by entering the the the, the link. Later yes, on. I, I, yeah, did, okay. did, didn't you receive an invitation for this space? Can I yes, think you so. are you are in the space, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the space. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, thanks. Ilka, Jane, Bo, takeaways from you as guest speakers. I, I, I really enjoyed being with you guys and uh, get the inspiration from uh, Jane and also get to know how space anymore. One thing I'm thinking of is that we're all getting better. So our learning curve is going like it and the technologies are getting better as well. So we are soon getting to the sweet spot where online meetings might even get better than the, the physical meetings. And I think we're getting closer now. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, okay. And I'll uh, stop the live stream now so we can still say goodbyes in, uh, in privacy of this group. Still recording though. And I will share the recording again. Jane? Great. Thank you very much. My, uh, it was really, really great to be part of this session. I uh, loved hearing more about psychological safety and how we have to create time to make sure that everybody is in a good place when we have these virtual meetings. And, and great, to, great to meet everybody and hear some, some tips, tips and tricks. So thank you, thank you, Paul and Ilke, and look forward to understanding more about house space because I certainly see it as something that we could use for meeting legacy would be really good. So thank you, everyone. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, it, was it was very really nice to see your activity and, and thanks for your, your stories, Jane and, and Boo. And thanks, Paul, for organizing this event. My pleasure, my pleasure. Okay, so take take care, stay safe, and see you soon, sometime soon in December. Thank, thank you, you Paolo. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, bye. You. thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Miguel, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs>